Hi, I've changed venues for the day because I'm watching the birds as I paint. And if you look closely, you can see a downy woodpecker outside picking on some suet that we put outside for him. So this is where I take my pictures. But today we're going to work from a, a picture that my friend Alyssa gave me of a cardinal. I just wanted to show you my little downstairs spot. Okay, so I'm going to attach the camera. Hopefully, I'll move a little more quickly. There we go. All right, then. Um, we're going to be working with a photograph that, as I said, my friend Elissa sent me. And it's a beautiful um, cardinal. So here's a photograph we're going to be working from, and I've made two prints of it. One a little bit larger, one a little bit smaller. I like this size for my painting, and I'm going to show you how to transfer. But first I want to show you what I'm going to be painting on. This is a, a watercolor block, and you can see I've already done the transfer, but I'll show you how in a minute. Watercolor block is simply watercolor paper that's been stacked and then glued around the sides so that when you paint on it, it can't buckle, which is a really good alternative to, to taping your paper down the way I had mentioned before. I'll show you that method too, um, and, and that's perfectly fine. But this is a nice way of doing it, and this is really very nice paper. It's it's 140 pound, which is not all that heavy, but it's, it's pure cotton, and it's hot pressed. Remember I talked about the different hot press and cold press? This is hot press, which means it's very, very, very smooth, and I really prefer that for my birds. So that's what I'm going to be painting our bird on. And what I've done with the smaller one, which is the size I want it to work with, was I printed these both out on my printer, and I took the took a pencil and colored in the back to make it like, like charcoal paper, like um, graphite paper, and then turned this over and I made little little marks where it would line up. You see that? Just little light marks to line it up if I had to move it. There and there. I'm not going to take a lot of time to, to reline them up, but you can see it in case it moved. And then I just held it down and traced over it with a pencil. And when you do trace over it, don't press real hard because if you do, you'll make ruts in your paper and the paint will go into those ruts and you really don't want that to be happening. So once you've done that, which I did here, and you can just use a regular number two pencil, any old pencil really. Once you've done that and transferred it, you might want to go over your lines just a little bit in case they're a little too light. But again, don't, don't go real dark because you remember what I said too, you, you will see your lines if, once you paint over them. Um, unless the color is. So I did darken up my, my lines a little bit so that you could see better what I was doing. And you need to go in then, and if there's any blotches of graphite from the back of your, your photograph, go in and take care of them very lightly so you don't damage the paper. If you just leave a little bit, it's okay because you'll, you'll probably be coming in with with some color. Um, so I'm going to take care of that. Okay. When you approach painting something that you want to look realistic, the first thing that you will do um, in, in a painting like this is start with the very lightest colors. So if I was looking at this, this bird's body, Um, you want to think that white is your very lightest color, but there's no white here. That This might be white, um, and we're not going to, to go there But right now because we're not going to do the background on this one. What What is probably the lightest color is this, this kind of a yellowy, buffy color. Um, I have a tool upstairs that I made that I, I didn't bring down, foolishly, that is a, a a uh, postcard index card actually with a hole punched in it and what you can do with a tool like that is lay it over an area so that all you can see is the color coming through the index card. I can 
I can make do with something like this. And so can you if, if you need to improvise. You can take some, some paper that you know is white and you can surround an area with that white like this so that you can actually see the color. You see that little kind of peachy buff color? That's probably your lightest color in the body of the bird. Up here it might be this color, which is a little pinker. So if I go up there with this and just get that area, which is going to be hard because it's so tiny, but I'll try. Just get that area. Uh -uh. When you compare that color to the white, you can see that it's just got a little bit of pink similar to right here. And that's a good way to see the actual color. Um, we see things and we think, well, that's that's snow. It, it should be white. Well, snow is often blue or green or purple, depending upon the, the shadows cast on it. You see here, it's just a little bit of pink. I think this might actually be the lightest color right here. So what I would do when I start this whole thing is put in, in the areas that I see them, my lightest lights. And that would be here, all through here. I can see some relatively light lights in here, up around his eye, up here, and back in these areas. And I would just use a very easy wash, um, soft edges, because we're going to be working over it, and put those areas in first. So let me, let me start to mix that. I want to make sure first that my video is actually recording because it seems to bounce out once in a while. Yes, it seems to be. Good. All right. Um, I'm using a pan of paints that I put together a few days ago. And I'll show you that. And these are these are half pans. And these were these things are the pans. And you can buy them real inexpensively. And then they give you a little adhesive tape. You can tape them to the surface if you want to. But again, you don't have to do this. I just, I have this palette to work at home because it has all my colors and these are my better paints. And this was liquid paint, tube paint that I just squeezed in there and now you can see it's dry. So I will have to reactivate that the way that I showed you before by dropping paint into it. And that's what I'm going to be working with. And I'll try to do this here where you can see me mix the color. My light isn't the best here. Um, I just have my kitchen light. And if you want to be real particular about color, you're going to want to work in daylight or you're going to want to get a full spectrum lamp that you can use when you're painting so that your colors are true. But since I'm just starting this one and just starting with the, the base colors today, it's not that important. And I'm a person that feels most creative at nighttime. So I have my better lights upstairs in my studio but I wanted to watch these birds a little bit before I moved upstairs. All right, I don't think I'm going to need any of these colors. When you mix watercolor, you generally don't use white because white will make it opaque. However, I am moistening my white in case I have a mistake or need to go back. Um, what you do instead is, is take your color and let the white of the background show through. And if you want something to remain completely white on your painting, you either have to paint around it or you have to use a resist. A resist is something they call, it's called mascoid, or there's a number of names for it. And it's kind of like fancy rubber cement that you can put down in very fine areas and no paint will go there as long as that resist is there. I prefer not to use it, but some people do like that. And I can show you that technique. Um, I don't have any actual completely white areas on this bird that I can see. They're all their pinks and buff colors, but no actual whites. Although people might want to do it for a highlight in the eye or if I wanted to put some snow on the branches, but I'm not going to do that today. So I'm going to mix. I don't know how far you can see on this. I'm going to mix this very, very, very light pink right here. And that's going to be what I'm going to put in all the, the very light areas. So I'm going to mix a decent amount of it. And 
it's not going to look like much of anything. I'm going to check these reds out, see which ones I like. That one's a little too magenta for me. A number of different reds here, and I moved them from one pan to another and left my the names in the other pan. That's a good color. That's a nice red that, to me, looks a lot like this red. So I'm going to just dilute that really, really good. A lot, a lot of water. It's a good idea to have a piece of paper on hand that you can test your colors out on. And, all right, I'm not seeing anything there yet. There, there's a little bit of, of pink. So my birdies are back. Oh well, I, I'll come and, and put my, my lights in my light areas. Now I'm gonna look closely and I'm gonna make sure that the areas stay soft, the edges. And I'm, since I, I made these lines darker so that you could see, I'm going to avoid the lines. If they weren't that dark, um, I wouldn't have to worry about avoiding them. I could go right over them because everything around them is going to be darker. Now this looks pretty wet. You see the water I'm putting in here. So I'm going to dry my brush and soak it up and see what remains. And what remains is just the hint of pink and that's exactly what I want to happen. I am going to go to a smaller brush because that big brush was a little bit in my way and soak up some more and anywhere I see that that very light pink down here back in this area I'm going to just stroke a little bit in uh, on, on his wings. And remember, I could put those other colors over it later. I can also erase out my lines before I do that so that I don't have to live with those lines forever. If you see an area that's close in color to it, but not exactly the same color, um, you can either put your color down and then glaze another color over to make it match the color, or you can wait and put that other color in later. I see a lot of, a lot of kind of a, a more of a buff in this area, so I'm not going to put the pink there. I do see some of the pink up in this area and here, so I'll still do those two spots. When I traced my bird, I, I traced the areas too. So you can see here, there's a line that comes down inside of the, the tracing. And that's, you can see it right here. Oops, I just touched it with my brush. Well, it, it's where the dark and the light kind of separate. And I'm not going to put a hard edge there, but it helps me to locate it on my drawing. So let me get that in there. Uh, maybe a little around this eye area there. And I'll probably wait until this dries completely and then soften my lines around these pinks so that I can come back in and, and really um, work with the paint rather than the pencil. I'm going to suck up a little bit of that extra paint so it dries nicely. This is so light and I know that there are going to be dark areas around it that I don't have to blend. So I don't have to worry too much about those edges. A little bit in the back here. Can't see it. Now this, I see a little graphite here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's very light. And on his feet. Which have dark lines around them, so I don't, I'm not worried too much about the pencil lines there. Well, I'm looking for my pinks. I'm drawing my brush in between, you can see. Not worrying too much about it going up into the body here. All right, so I think that's all I'm going to use of that color, and I'm going to mix that, that buff color and put that in next. So mixing colors, you're going to have to, that's a whole different thing. I mean, it's, a lot of it's experience, a lot of it's playing with the paints, um, some of it's knowing what one color will do to another. And we can learn that too, certainly. Um, but if I were to teach you all of that right now, it would be a whole different lesson. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and mix mine and you can mix yours. And 
I really, you know, do the best you can. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect. So what? It's your bird. All right. I just heard my husband pull up in his car. So I'm going to stop right here and I will continue to mix my colors and put in my light areas and I'll come back to you when I, when I start working over those light areas.